What do you look for in a director? A partner, a dictator, a teacher, a mentor, a father, a mother? What do you mm. look for? I look, I don't really look, I just accept offers if they're any good, but I would, I'm happy to work with a collaborator. I am, as I say, I'm aware of my limitations. And, and one of my limitations, not being a director, is not having a macro view of what we are doing with the production, right? So, but you, they walk in the room in very different temperaments. You get a Langham temperament, you get a Hirsch temperament, you get a Derek Goldby temperament, mm -hmm. you get a Richard Manette temperament, you get a Marty Meriden temperament. This is... And I, I offer myself to each and every one of those directors as the very thing they need as a piece of the watch that they're building, as a piece of the puzzle they're putting together, as a color on their palette to paint with, right? As long as I trust them. And you know what Ralph Richardson said, I, I give them 10 minutes, right? He said, directors, first day, you got 10 minutes. And, and, and I wish I was kidding. And I learned at, at, the, at, the, at the feet of the master when, when Max Heltman, God rest him, was in um, our Romeo and Juliet playing Prince Aeschylus for the umpteenth time at the coffee break, 11.15, I think, of the first day. I was behind Max in the green room coffee lineup, and I was rather excited to be playing it with Shauna. We were, you know, a terrific pair, and there were lots of lovely people in the show. And I said, well, Max, this is exciting. I mean, don't you think? <laughs> and he paused. He inspired, and he said, well, these c**ts have set us adrift. It was 11.15 on the first day. And by the second week, he was saying, come on, you rank church basement amateurs. Let's get on with this. He wasn't entirely wrong, but we were trying. <laughs> we were trying. 